One of your most important brain chemicals in your area of brain chemistry is dopamine. And all of us love dopamine because when we have a dopamine release, it makes us feel good. And when you have a constant stress on your dopamine production, you're diluting yourself more and more. So in this age we live in, dopamine is way overused and it comes in the form of overstimulation. Now, we all have smartphones and we all look at them throughout the day for whatever reason. If you use it as a tool, that's really what it is. But if you use it as an entertainment device and also you're communicating with everybody all the time and taking pictures of every last thing you do and you get these little dopamine hits every time you get a reply or you get a like or you, get, uh, you watch a video that makes you laugh or you find something that's very, very interesting, it becomes extremely overstimulating. And that's one area that's just come in in the last 15 years that is extremely difficult for the body to deal with, and that really depletes your dopamine reserves. Another way that you tax your system with overstimulation is any kind of caffeine at all. If you're having caffeine, every time you consume caffeine, it creates a dopamine release, gives you a little bit of a buzz. And the more you do that, the more often you do it, or the larger amount you consume, the more dopamine you're demanding your body produce which also drains you. If you're on caffeine enough for long enough, it's like cocaine. You have to keep doing it just to get back to normal. You feel very low if you don't have it. That means you've really tapped into your dopamine reserves and damaged yourself. You don't want that to happen. I don't use caffeine at all because I learned that lesson the hard way by way overstimulating myself in my life. And then I started using less and less and less until I finally found out that when I don't use it at all, I have a much, much higher quality of life with much better energy and my dopamine reserves are way up. Uh, another way that dopamine gets released all the time is when you eat foods that you're addicted to. And you may not even realize you're addicted to them, but there are certain foods you eat that cause dopamine hits, dopamine releases. And that depletes your dopamine as well. So those are your three main areas. The mental stimulation, which causes the brain to have stimulation that, that demands dopamine. When you hit your adrenal glands, which are demanding adrenal release, which is the caffeines and things like that. And then you have your foods that are pleasure foods. They're called hyper palatable foods that make you very, very happy when you eat them, when you first start to have them. And then as time goes on, your addiction to them is so extreme that if you don't regulate that stuff, now you're going to be depleting the dopamine so much that just to get back to normal, you have to have those foods. So you're the one living in your body. You know, you know how your body feels and how it reacts. So you want to get the stimulation down to the bare minimum possible so that when you do have a stimulation of some sort, you have a full bank account of dopamine. You get much, much more pleasure out of that than you would otherwise have. Another last one to hit on is sexual addiction. There's a sexual desire plague on the earth right now where people are having sexual stimulation far too often. And the more, the more you are sexually stimulated, the more you're demanding that dopamine release as well. And that depletes you. So I think in this age, sexual stimulation is one of the biggest plagues out there. And it, it diminishes the enjoyment of that pleasure the more often you do it until it becomes just a commonplace thing. You don't ever want that. Any kind of sexual activity, you want to be very, very special and have nice space in between so that you do not deplete yourself. So it's up to you what you do. You have the information of what to do. If you want to have a super enjoyable life, build up your dopamine bank account so that you have lots of it and you're only using small amounts at a time and you'll enjoy it about a hundred times more. As time goes on, there's more and more information coming out about the importance of leptin. Now, everyone has leptin in their bodies, not to be confused with lectin, is L-E-P-T-I-N. And it is now known as the master hormone. And that regulates your endocrine system like nothing else. It's, it's like the compass for your body. And it also regulates your appetite. Your body is only going to be able to access leptin if you become leptin sensitive. But if you're spiking your insulin even a little bit during the day, you're going to interrupt your body's ability to access the leptin as the master hormone. And that's going to throw your system off. So when people are having cravings for things, that's an indication you're not tapping into your leptin at all. And that also means that you're having insulin spikes throughout the day. And whenever you have an insulin spike, that means that you've got free insulin rolling through your bloodstream that is going to wreak havoc in your system. 
and that is going to wear you down over time. And that is also going to cause the white fat to start storing in your body because the insulin is seen as a toxin. And so the fat will encapsulate that and start to build white fat. When you're leptin sensitive, that's where you're able to turn the white fat into brown fat. And that involves a very specific timing of when you eat. And there are people on this earth who are very experienced at this and have done literally decades of research on how to allow the body to be leptin sensitive. I'm not one of those experts. I am learning from them, but you really need to tap into that knowledge in order to become leptin sensitive. And these are things that I'm going to be sharing more and more as time goes on with, you know, where you can get access to this information. But yeah, leptin is the most important hormone in your body. It is the master hormone. It will remove all of your cravings. It literally teaches your body the food that your body needs the most and wants the most to have the best quality of life. And that means that you have to simply let go of the identification with different foods. People become very identified with the food they eat and they become very addicted to it. They don't even realize they're addicted to the food until they try to stop it. And then they realize they've got binge eating happening, they've got cravings going on, and the brain is not in its perfect state because now the brain is interrupted with all these cravings. And when you're in that state, you're an addict and mm. it's a food addiction. So tapping into leptin is a very big deal. Unfortunately, at this point, because society is so geared in a certain direction, most people will never in their lifetime experience being leptin sensitive because they are so deeply conditioned by the, the way that they consume food and the social environment they're in, eating food in a very normal way uh, along with everybody else who is also leptin insensitive. So leptin sensitivity is becoming more and more of a thing and it's a very real thing, but you can only know what it is when you yourself become leptin sensitive. Until that point, you'll have no knowledge or experience in that and there are definitive protocols around that.